Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video, we will talk about how to supply your Arduino, Raspberry Pi or ESP project with power properly. So let's take a look on a circuit where we have a load that's maybe a coil, something that could be anything from a pump or maybe also a fan or any other inductive load. So this is kind of a significant load because we have an increased current draw in the startup moment. Beside this heavy load, we will have another small load, which is a resistor or more specifically a temperature sensor in our case, but it's nothing else than a resistive load. Our circuit will be supplied with five volts. Obviously we will have a common ground and those five volts will come directly from our Arduino or Raspberry Pi. To do so, we will use the five volt pin at our Arduino and obviously the ground pin or the five volt pin on the Raspberry Pi respectively. Your Arduino or Raspberry Pi would then be supplied by USB, via USB-C or USB Type-B in case of an Arduino. So far that's what you would normally see in a quick setup. But as soon as your circuit gets a bit more complex because you may have 33 volt sensors as well, of course you could supply them with the 33 volt pins, but it starts getting a bit messy. So to introduce 3.3 volts, you would normally introduce a DC-DC converter. So the DC-DC converter takes the 5 volts and outputs 3.3 volts on a third pin. Since DC-DC converters variate in price and quality a lot, you would normally put one or two capacitors in parallel to the DC-DC converter. Those capacitors have the function to stabilize the outputted converted voltage. This is especially important if you have sensors connected to the DC-DC converter that are communicating with high frequency communication such as I2C or SPI. Typical values for those capacitors are around 33 microfarad and 10 microfarad. So you would always like to have a big one and a small one for the different type of noises. But wait a minute, even though we have a nice setup now, we are still supplying everything via our pins from our Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Those pins can actually provide only limited current and can be easily overpowered. So no matter if it's a Raspberry Pi, Arduino or ESP, you should have those as consumers in your circuit and not as the supplier. So yes, you can use them as the power supply, but you definitely shouldn't depending on the size and the load of your circuit. So what we would do now is we would connect a USB 5 volts directly to our circuit and will power our whole setup. But by doing so, we are actually hitting the next threshold and that's the limited power supply of USB. Some of you might say now, wait, that's not true. I am actually powering my laptop with up to 100 watts or more via USB Type-C. And while this is actually true for USB Type-C and your laptop with dedicated chargers and dedicated laptops that are communicating to each other and enabling higher voltages, USB Type-A is using 5 volts only and has a current limitation around 3 amps. And since power equals voltage times current, this will equal to 5 volts times 3 amps, therefore 15 watts. But what if we need more? We will do exactly the same that USB Type-C is doing. We will level up the voltage. We will introduce a 24 volts level. Of course we could also go for higher currents to keep the 5 volt as a voltage level, but this would result at one hand in high cable diameters and on the other hand 5 volt power supplies are very common up to 3 amps because of USB, but everything above 3 amps is becoming less common and therefore more expensive, also because the power supply itself has then to deal with higher current, which is normally always more expensive. So it's always easier to go for higher voltages. I've chosen 24 volts, but you could also choose 12 volts. Both are very common voltages. 12 volts has a lot of automotive background, while 24 volts is very common in industrial applications. So what we have to do now is to introduce another DC-DC converter, doing exactly the same as before, converting the 24 volts down to 5 volts and again we will put two capacitors in parallel to ensure we have a clean and proper voltage level. So a setup like this will enable you to power your microcontroller or microcomputer properly, will enable you to power your big loads like fans and pumps and other inductive loads 
or maybe an LCD display or whatever you have in mind, as well as it will enable you to power your 3.3 volt sensors. Keep in mind that a setup like this is also enabling you to use higher voltage components, especially those high loads like pumps and fans. Those work much better with 12 or 24 volts for the same reason as explained before, because of the lower current needed for higher power. So you could copy this circuit right away for your own application using some DC-DC converters available at your place. Take a look on those converters. If the efficiency is above 80% or around 80%, you can be sure that it's a proper one, a good one. If they're significantly below 80% efficiency, it will probably simply burn the rest of the energy to step down the voltage, which will result in a lot of heat for your circuit and also burn a lot of electricity. So not good for your electricity consumption or for your battery consumption in case you're running a low energy setup. So I hope this circuit will help you to professionalize your IoT or Raspberry Pi or other Eno project. Of course it works exactly the same with an ESP32 or 8266 or any other microcontroller or microcomputer. So thanks for watching, make sure to be subscribed for more content around electronics and IoT and in case you have any questions to circuits like this, drop a comment below and I will make sure to come back to you. See you next time.